Okay, this video is going to go along with chapter 15, section 1, where we're discussing balance sheets. As with all chapters, the reading is probably, and especially in this chapter, is probably some of the most critical information to be successful in this chapter, because there's a lot of terminology, a lot of formulas, definitions, so please read that carefully before we get started. Going along with that, there's a couple of the things I wanted to point out as we're reading through this together is the balance sheet components. And that starts on the second page of the section. And they're listing what is making up the various components of the balance sheet. And in this particular section, they're starting with assets. So they're giving a definition of an asset. They're giving examples and examples of current assets and then they're continuing that about property, plants, equipment, investments and other assets and then they continue on down the page with owner's equity, liabilities, long-term liabilities, etc. and it finishes on the top of the next page with stockholders equity. You need to kind of read, make sure you read through this section because you're going to need to list these various items in the proper spot on a balance sheet in some sort of a fashion similar to this. And we will come back to this as a later example on in this lecture. But first I want to just go over some of the sections in the homework. Starting with number one, two, and three, they've done those in the book, but just kind of wanted to go over how they got those. They had assets of 283,000, liabilities of 121,400, and to get the owner's equity, they simply subtracted liabilities from assets. Very straightforward, because this was their underline, so that's the answer they found. Here, the underline of the answer they were hunting for was assets. Well, in order to get assets, you would take owner's equity, add it back to the liabilities to get the assets. Okay, So it's depending on which way you need to go, you either need to subtract or add back. Here's another subtraction problem. We have assets of 45,300. They were looking for liabilities and the owner's equity was 16,300. So in this particular case, you would just simply subtract the owner's equity from the assets to get the liabilities, because these can be interchangeable in a subtraction problem in order to solve the information you need. So doing one more, number four, they have assets are given, liabilities are given, you're looking for owner's equity, so again, you would just simply subtract liabilities from assets. So that whole section is very similar, either adding or subtracting to find the gap in the information you need. The bottom half of this page is deciding where certain items are going to go on your balance sheet. And even though you don't have to do all of these, you just have the odds I wanted to do a bunch of these with you because this is going to be critical for making sure that you're putting the appropriate assets in the right spot on a balance sheet. Because if you put them in the wrong spot, it's not going to work. So let's kind of go over there on why they're there. Number 12 starts off with land. Well, our choices are current asset, asset fixed asset, a current liability, a long-term long liability, and equity. So the amount of money that the owner has invested or has accumulated in the company. Well, land of those choices is obviously going to be a fixed asset. It's not going anywhere. It stays the same. It may increase over time, but that asset is not going to change. It's, you're not going to sell it, so to speak. Number two is, or 13 is supplies. Okay, supplies are going to be sold. That's probably, or used up. So that's going to end up being a current asset see why they marked it there. Securities. It's, it's an asset, it's not under owner's liability because you can sell it. Okay, Marketable is the key term here. So they could sell that, return that in for cash, so that would be a current asset. 
hence the term marketable is that key there when we're looking at that. Retained earnings, so that's the money that the owner has accumulated in the business, so that's going to be over here under owner's equity. Okay. Next building, again, it's solid, you're not going to sell it, it's going to be right there for you to be able to use, so that's going to be a fixed asset. Mortgage payable, and that's probably every month, that's going to be your long-term liability, it's stuff you owed, it's not current, because it's not like you have to pay it next week, so it's long-term. Mortgage, you're going to have to pay every month for quite a few years, probably, so that's why it's under long-term liability. Cash, current asset, that makes pretty much sense. Notes payable, so that means that you owe somebody money. So that's going to be under current liability, because probably those are going to be short-term in duration. You know, it could be a year or two, but they're not going to be like a mortgage that's going to be long-term, number of years. Okay. Equipment, fixed asset, note receivable, that's going to be a current asset because you're going to get the money. Okay. Prepaid expenses, even though expenses are generally liabilities, you've already paid it, so that's an asset. Okay, that's kind of the tricky one there. Merchandise inventory is going to be an asset. So on down the road here. So these are, in fact, let's finish those. I think that's a great idea because that's going to be really critical for setting up our balance sheet. Okay, truck, fixed asset. Again, it's there, going to be there for a while. Debenture bonds. Okay, so those are things that you're going to owe. So those are going to be a long-term liability. Accounts receivable. Asset. And securities payable are going to be a liability. Or salaries payable. Okay, because you're going to owe those every month. So that's going to be a current liability. So that's going to go into that current liability section. Okay, so these are just examples of where they would fit in a balance sheet. And that's critical because you're going to make one. Your number 35 is you're going to create a balance sheet that looks very similar to the example given in the text. Okay, it's going to be a two-year deal, comparative. Okay, and this is how they're going to set up. Current assets, you can use this as a guide. Liabilities. Doesn't have to look exactly like this. In fact, it probably won't. But it's going to look similar okay, and where it goes. So, again, with all of these, read through the section, set it up, go slow. They have some examples in the back. Okay, just if you're having a little difficulty with it and where is this going to go, they do have examples in the back of the text. So, use those and have fun with these. This is good stuff.